me look up real quick if they've announced a launch date. Um, it says weeks of teasers and leaks. The one plus 13 has an official launch date. The company will be fully unveiling its new flagship phone on October 31st in China. Damn. So they're doing it on Halloween. What? That's cool. Oh, you know what? That's right, because their website, if you go to their website, it's all Halloween themed. That makes sense. Let's go to OnePlus and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Is it OnePlus.com? Why did it pull up previous bullshit? Check this out. So that real quick before I show you the Halloween theme. So we got a launch date. So you're they're coming. The one plus 13 is going to come in blue. So that picture we were looking at yesterday and we didn't know if it was a phone case on there or if it was going to be actually a blue colored device that they're launching. We do. We now know. Yes, it is going to be blue. It was not a case. It was a weird picture, but uh typically they've always released three colors now they usually do two at launch and then they'll release a third color like um four three four or five months later to kind of regenerate some sales some revenue from sales right um hopefully they release three colors at launch and not two uh so there will be a blue there will be a white and there will be a black one uh kind of like the white one it looks really, really nice. This is going to have a flat display. So if you look down here on the bottom right, on the bottom, bottom right picture, uh, flat display. So um, people can rejoice. I don't, I haven't come across too many people that, that liked the curved display. It was cool when it came out, right? When Samsung came out with it, what was it? The uh, S6, S6 Edge? Edge Plus, I don't know, whatever the hell. Actually, I think that I think Samsung did the Note, right? Wasn't it the Note Five? And it only one side was curved. That was the weird thing. And it would run like a little ticker across the bottom. Y'all remember that? I think it was the Note Five, from what I remember. Damn, that's crazy. Uh, so hopefully, not saying curved screens couldn't make a comeback, but um, I like flat displays. I it's just personal preference. I, I can put glass on there, it's glass screen protector. That's what sucks with the curved display. You can't really put glass. Again, I'm not paying eighty dollars for a what is that stupid uh glass dome dome stone or something? You have to drop glue on there and then put your glass screen protector on the curved display. And then you gotta shine freaking neon lights uh, that are probably got uranium in it you know people were going blind from that no i'm just kidding nobody's going blind i'm just blowing smoke up your ass but um uh, 80 piece of glass no not doing that so what the hell is i gonna look at um we'll get into specs oh let me show you their website real quick just to show you halloween makes sense the only other phone i can remember while well, i'm pulling this up the only other phone i can remember that was not launched on halloween but was close to halloween is speaking of old school phones the nexus was it the five or the five x it was the five it had to been the five because that was one of my favorite phones of all time and I remember I, w I was at work that day. God, I was, I was, I was excited. I mean, I could not wait. I was going to, I was going to, I had to sneak off to the bathroom every five minutes to see if Google put it up for sale on their, on their website so I could buy it uh, real quick. Uh, all right. So check this out. So here is the website. Can y'all see that? Yeah. So here's OnePlus's website. It's Halloween themed. So what the hell is going on? new computer my bad so um you know i'm sure they're gonna that makes sense right 
um, very cool. Now, I don't know. I Look, it'll be launched in China. And actually, uh, I don't know. Look, I, I don't know. Traditionally, they've launched them in China first and then globally after that. But their store is Halloween themed and it is the U.S. store. Uh, I'm hoping maybe uh, that they launch them globally, although I don't know. We'll see. Stay tuned to eSIM Studios, right? I'm going to stay on top of this. I'm going to try and get one. Whether they send one to me or not, I'm going to have one. So uh, if you're interested in this device, you got to stay tuned. Stay locked in. eSIM Studios will cover everything on this topic. Uh, let's see here. Specs on the OnePlus 13. So here you go. These are official. OnePlus 13 is going to have a 2K, a true 2K BOE. They're a very good uh, uh, display manufacturer. They're Samsung's the world's largest uh, display manufacturer, but BOE, they've been around for a long time. And uh, they make a lot of a lot of displays, AMOLED displays. So it'll be a 2K BOE branded X2 micro quad curved display. Again, I told you it's going to be flat. Technically, on paper, it's going to be a curved display, although it's going to be flat, right? And I mentioned this again, so I'm not going to beat you over, you know head with this again bore you out but where the side of the phone be right here where the side of the phone right here meets the top of the display there's a 90 degree angle right you see where the top where this meets this this phone it's like a sharp right angle right it's a sharp right angle there's no curvature it's one line meets one line and then there's the side the quad curve display where this, where these two sides meet, where these two lines meet right here, it's not going to be a sharp right angle. Going back to geometry days, it's going to be a micro curve. It's they do that for one thing. So, and you, I don't think you'll be able, really be able to tell, but technically it's a curved display. But it's going to be flat, if that makes sense. So, um, it's for I can think of two reasons. One reason, it's easier to hold. It'll feel better in your hand, right? Uh, and the second reason is I think they're going to try to hide. And it's going to be on all four sides, not just on not just on, on the sides, not just here. Well, there we go. Not just here. It's going to be all on each side, on all four sides. It's going to have micro curve display. I think not only does it feel better in the hand, easier to hold, I think they're going to try to hide the bezel, right? The bezel around the, sc the screen. You see that black strip all the way around the screen? I think it, uh, it helps to uh, basically hide that. So when you hold it and you're looking at it, and phew, it's all screen. Okay. It will incorporate the new Snapdragon 8 Elite. Now, little side note. Qualcomm's actually, and we didn't mention this, shame on me. Qualcomm's actually making two CPUs. So Samsung's notorious for doing this. Uh, in previous Galaxy launches, you'll see a custom Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset. Is it is it really custom? Did they just make this for Samsung? I mean, technically, I guess. But how? okay, so how is it different? Well, all they do is they crank up the... <laughs> they they overclock it a little bit not a lot it's like it's like 0.1 or 0.2 gigahertz so instead of what is the other one a point uh, what does it ramp, ramp up to 4.32 yeah so this new snapdragon 8 elite will will crank up will max out at 4.32 gigahertz <laughs> that's pushing some power now for example in the past so let's say they're gonna, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning this because I think they're gonna do the same thing with this OnePlus device. So OnePlus has worked hand in hand with Qualcomm and said, we're gonna have a custom, we're gonna have a custom new Snapdragon 8 Elite. We're gonna call it the Snapdragon 8 Extreme. Uh, so what they do, so 
it's basically the exact same chipset. They're just instead of it maxing out at 4.32 gigahertz, it'll max out at at 4.35 gigahertz. They just overclock it, just just one or two percent, and that's it. Just enough to say, hey, we have ours is custom, custom made. So, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but that's that's the explanation. Unless I'm unaware of some completely redesigned CPU for OnePlus, I doubt it. But I could be wrong, but if history proves me right, that's exactly what they're doing. Now, check this out. 24 gigs of RAM. 24 gigabytes of RAM. Holy shit. That's a lot. It's going to have L. DDR5X RAM, so that's the very best uh, uh, RAM you can get, LDDR5, but it's not just 5, it's 5X, which is the newest, newest generation. Up to one terabyte UFS 4.0 storage, triple 50 megapixel cameras on the back, it will be Hasselblad uh, branded. Uh, what else we got here? A 6,000 milliamp per hour battery. This is their new battery tech. So it charges faster, it lasts longer. Um, all new battery in there, battery technology. That OnePlus has patented this design. So it's, they're only using and they're only using it, right? Unless other companies want to pay them to use their tech, but it's a brand new battery tech. Um, 100 watts and 50 watts. So 100 watts wired fast charging and 50 watts wireless charging um probably charge zero to 100 and i don't know 20 minutes and uh well, plugged in and wireless probably zero to 100 and 30 minutes I, I doubt it probably 45 i hope it has the uh, uh wireless charging 2.0 no android phone has been released with wireless charging 2.0 I think the iPhone 16 Pro Max now has wireless charging 2.0. I meant to test that out, but I don't have a I don't have a 2.0 uh, wireless charger here, do I? I do not. Thought I did over there. Anyways, I uh, hope it has wireless charging 2.0. We'll see. Color OS 15, hydrogen OS, oxygen OS. Who knows? It's all the same, really. Uh, AAC. Interesting. So it's going to have a new motor, a new vibration motor, it looks like. Also... It's not only going to be IP68, it's going to be rated at IP69. IP69 rating. Have y'all ever seen that on, on a phone before? I think OnePlus has the very first. Remember back in the day, I said back in the day, a couple years ago, OnePlus would not, uh, OnePlus would not get their phones waterproofed, or they would not have it certified. Technically, their phones were waterproof because they put all the seals in there, like every other company that has their phones waterproof. Uh, but other companies would actually certify it. OnePlus did not. They skipped certification. It helped keep the prices down because they would. It's part of the cost that these manufacturers, um, uh, you know, push down to to the consumer. OnePlus notoriously would just skip the certification, although they would be waterproof. Um, not anymore. They're certifying them, and not only are they getting it certified, they're taking it one step further. They said, oh, I'll see your IP68 rating and one up you to IP69. Now, what is IP69? I have no idea, but let's find out. So IP69 rating. Let's see what it tells us. Um, dun, 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 dun. IP69 rating offers protection against high pressure liquids and steam cleaning. In addition to being dust tight, the six in the first sign signifies the dust protection as, no, I'm looking at 69. 
I mean, I was looking at 60. I need 69. Pause. Let's see. Oh, I see what it is. So check this out. Are y'all seeing the same thing I am? Nope. Here, let's look at this. Now, let's remove that. Okay, so look at this. Y'all see it? Okay, so IP69 is on the right. IP68 is on the left. So IP69, so 68, damn it. IP68 is rated for under the water protection, right? Uh, now, down to one meter underwater for, I think it's up to like 30 minutes or something, and you'll, you're good. IP69 surpasses, meaning IP68 rating, meaning it will do everything IP68 does and more, meaning um, protection against dust and other solid particles, as well as withstanding high pressure water jets. So you see a, what is that, a car wash, uh, water, oh, damn it, why can't I say it? Pressure water sprayer. So apparently, not only will it survive under one foot of water for 30 minutes or an hour, you can actually spray it with a high-pressure water gun, and it will remain dry inside. So that's what that means. Very cool. Anything else we need to know? Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Specifically designed to withstand close range, high pressure water jets, suitable for demanding and challenging environments. Mm, so this costs even more than IP68. So OnePlus is doing the exact opposite of what they used to do. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, enough of that. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Is that it? And then we'll have micro crystalline glass, blue, white, and black. Micro crystalline glass. I'm assuming that's going to be, wait, my, is that going to be in the back or the front? I don't know. But you get micro crystalline glass. Um, now, what would a ESIM Studios podcast live stream be without an Apple troll. <clears throat> so with the OnePlus 13 coming out, appears to be a badass phone. Um, specs for days, you know, looks pretty cool. Whether you like the design or you don't, it's a nice phone, right? Um, you can just put a, cup, uh, a, a case on it, right? Um, so with this look seemingly being specced out, meaning it's going to be it just it's gonna blow you away now and that's not even mentioning the samsung devices that are going to be carrying uh this new snapdragon 8 uh elite uh, come january but with all the news of this new snapdragon 8 elite blowing away the competition specifically apple oh what would a podcast be without an apple troll you know i was thinking earlier you know, the people at Apple, I wonder if they're paying attention. Yeah, they got to be, right? You, you would think they would be paying attention, right? You got to you gotta watch competition. Well, with the price, the starting price of these OnePlus devices, if they stay rather current in, to their previous history, you can get a spec'd out. I mean, look at those specs. You can get a spec'd out, or should I say, look at these specs. You can get a specced out OnePlus 13 that blows away iPhone for $800. Now, this phone here, twice as expensive, this $1,600 phone, and won't even come close to what OnePlus is about to put out. And I'm, I'm talking see, performance. I'm talking battery life. I think the cameras are going to be better on the OnePlus 13. Basically, everything is going to be better than this phone, and it's twice as as expensive. Now, what do you think Apple? What do you, what do you think their reaction is today? 
Uh, I know what their reaction is. Oh! That's the head. That's the head of design uh, for Apple. <clears throat> and uh, he is in disgust. Boy, oh boy. They got issues over there. So you can get a twice as good of a phone for literally half the price. And um, boy, can't wait to test these out. Um, sorry, Apple. Come up short again. Coming up short again. Um, so, if I believe that does it for the day, Daniel, how's it going, brother? Um, I love it. I love it. So, I'm using it right now. Uh, previously, I was using this. Oh my, my! I have a I have a real good Samsung Chromebook. It's a top of the line Chrome, Samsung Chromebook, but running Chrome OS, it it'll do these fine. But um, so my main concern with this uh, Snapdragon X Elite uh, powered uh, Book Four Edge, Samsung Book Four Edge, was software compatibility. Compatibility. Um, I didn't know if the apps in programs that I use in my in my Windows computers, because I can use a, I mean, I can use a Chromebook and get away with my everyday activities. Um, but there are a couple of programs that I like to have. I don't have to have, but I like to have. So um, I was uh, video editing stuff, uh, some music, some audio uh, uh, mixing stuff. Um, I download every this morning because like yesterday I signed in, but it pain in the ass. There was a ton of updates, and that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, ton of updates. So I signed in yesterday, updating, 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 and kind of just you know put it to the side and just let it do its thing. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll jump on it in the morning and really see what we got here. And I've installed everything that I use, and everything runs. Everything runs fine. So it looks like they finally, at least the Samsung, I don't know if I can't, that'd be a good question to see. Okay. So how's the Acer one doing? How's the Dell doing it? Do they have any more compatibility issues? Is, is the Lenovo Slim 7X having any compatibility issues? Because I know that they're getting driver updates or, or, you know, stuff like that from specifically from Qualcomm, but there were a lot of Samsung updates in, as well as Windows updates, as well as Qualcomm updates. So um, it looks like everything's good. <laughs> I guess we'll we'll find out. Um, I got a bunch of tabs, RAM, and I've always had to have 32 gigs of RAM. Doesn't seem like an issue now. It looks like I might be able to get away with 16. Um, but the performance has been very good. <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I downloaded the game and not on game, but um, I'm gonna do a couple couple for a video review. Um, battery life appears to be pretty good, although I'm gonna really start testing that tomorrow because I did not start today with a full battery, but I will tomorrow. Um, screen is gorgeous. Everything about this I like. So now yeah, I'm only on day one, so. Uh, we will see, but so far, so good. I really like this thing. This thing. It's super thin, uh, very light. Uh, and look, the, like I mentioned yesterday, it's only got two USB-C ports, an HDMI, an audio jack. Now, I have a USB Type-C. Can you, I wonder if you can see it down here on the bottom right screen. It's plugged in. I have a USB Type-C extender, basically, um, it's, it provides an extra like four or five type C inputs. I think it's USB type C 3.2. So it's not Thunderbolt level, but the two on the computer are two Thunderbolt four ports. And then, um, but my extender is uh 3.2, but that's fine. But I got, I got everything plugged in. I got my mic, um, power, so I'm charging it while I'm streaming stream when you stream the battery goes fast no matter what you have 
Um, so I, I got it plugged in and then I have my webcam hooked up. Um, still getting used to all the Galaxy apps. So that's one of the reasons why I got a Samsung specific device is to uh, use it with my phone. So and I got Samsung watch, earbuds, so everything, the fast pairing, that's been very handy, very nice. But when it comes to compatibility, it's been, I haven't had any issues. So it appears they've fixed a lot of stuff here. Um, I heard, I, I got on um, Reddit I don't know, it was a few days ago, right before I, I bought this. And somebody said, oh, the CapCut is now, CapCut, the video editor, is now works on uh, ARM, our, the Snapdragon ARM chipsets. Um, so Adobe, if you use Adobe, it'll work. Any of their Lightroom or any of their video editing, their whole suite works. CapCut works, very popular. I use that, works. Canva works. Um, DaVinci Resolve, which is another popular video editor, works. Audacity Audio works. Um, what else do I have on here that I downloaded? Everything works. I have not had one crash, not one fail, not one freeze, uh, nothing. It's working exquisite, just like any other laptop. Like if I just purchased it out of the blue and didn't know that it had compatibility issues right out the gate, I wouldn't know any different, right? It works like a regular computer. So I think it's great. <laughs> so uh, we'll get into, I'll, I'll um, I'll probably, I'm going to re start recording tomorrow some stuff. Multiple videos record tomorrow. Um, I'll see if I can get at least get one, get this one finished tomorrow. Um, I'm going to do some benchmarking testing, stress tests, all that stuff. We'll, we'll take battery life tomorrow. Maybe do a long, a uh, day in the life type of video where uh, I'll start it in the morning when I get up, when I turn this on at 100%, and then just throughout the day, kind of record where I'm at, what I've been doing, and then um, upload like that just to show you what I got running, where's the battery life, how's it performing. So it's been wonderful, man. Absolutely wonderful. So I really, really like it. It's knock on wood. Knock on wood. Good purchase. So uh, it'd be a nice little, little laptop um, to take around with me because um, I got... I got some other companies sending me some mini PCs, some little desktop PCs that I'll probably use for uh, in the office here. But this little laptop's good to take with me. It's it weighs, I think, just over a pound or what is it uh, under a kilo, a kilo surface or whatever, just under two pounds. But it's like it's the thickness of a tablet, so it's it's portability is awesome. So. I got to run. I am past my hour. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it uh, for stopping by. If you're interested in any of these stories or maybe you missed the OnePlus part or you missed the Qualcomm part, no problem. Uh, just go to YouTube, search eSIM Studios. We shall pop up. That's our home base, our home channel, our home platform, YouTube, eSIM Studios on YouTube. Catch all the replays there. And then remember, we also are our podcast, the audio only podcast is doing very, very, very good. It's up. I was looking at our analytics uh, yesterday. It's up 472% in the last 30 days, 472%. So that, that means people's li people are listening to the audio form. So I want to thank you uh, in regards to that. And uh, yeah. Uh, I really appreciate it. So um, if you, my contact information, if you need anything, if you got any questions, um, whatever, you hit me up in the description, contact information is down below. And before we get out of here, don't forget, please subscribe to the channel uh, so you get notified whenever we have new content, we go live or have a new review or anything like, like that. So you know, compiling reviews and stuff for the iPhone. Don't think I forgot about that. But uh, I have something very interesting I want to show y'all, but um, it'll be soon. I'll upload that soon. So I got to get out of here. Thank you very much. Please be safe. Please have a wonderful Monday afternoon. And as always, we will see you tomorrow. Peace out.